Okay, my name is Hunter Coy. Today I'm speaking with Madeline Weaver. We are conducting this interview as part of the, as part of the IUP Oral History Program's Coronavirus Collection. We are conducting our interview over Zoom. Thank you for meeting with me today. No problem. Okay, I'm gonna start um, asking you some questions. Okay. So where did you grow up um, and where do you live now? Well, I was born on a military base in Jacksonville, North Carolina. And I stayed there till I was about three months old. And then I came back here to Pennsylvania and lived in Strongstown and grew up on, in Strongstown the rest of my life. And I live about eight minutes from where I grew up. So it's like Homer City, it's not Homer City, but it's technically Homer City. So like eight minutes from where. So I've been in this area my entire life. Yeah. So how old are you? And what is like your current living situation and like family dynamic? So I am 20. I'll be 21 in less than a month. Um, I live with both of my parents, my mom and my dad, and my little brother. And we have two doggies. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what college do you currently attend? IUP. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to start getting into like the more on topic questions. So when do you remember hearing about COVID-19? How did you learn about it? And do you remember where you were? Um, I remember probably in January, December or January, I remember hearing about a virus in another country. And I think I was either you or my dad, I was talking to about it. Um, just hearing about it, uh, talked about that you guys have heard it other places and like, oh, this could possibly come to the United States. And in my mind, I was like, what? Like, that's not going to happen. And I worry about everything. So obviously that kind of worried me. I was like, oh, so it could happen. And so that's the first time I remember hearing about it was from one of you guys. And I don't remember where we were, probably at one of our houses, but um, not specifically, I don't remember where, but after you guys had said something about it, then it started becoming more of a topic of conversation and being seen on the news or like social medias more often um, in like January and February then. Okay. So did you think um, COVID-19 would directly affect your life in any way? At the time when I first heard about it, I didn't think about it just because it was all the way over in another country. It was like, oh, that's not going to affect me. Um, but then when someone said, it could possibly come here, then I realized like, oh, like it could come here. And like, what if it comes near us? What if I got it? What if my family members got it? So then after I've heard about it spreading to other countries, I was like, oh, so it could possibly come here and it can affect all my loved ones and myself. And it got kind of scary then. Okay, so back when the, all the lockdowns like first hit, what were, um, what were your expectations when you first heard that the, most of the country was gonna go into quarantine, like lockdown situation? Well, when I first heard about it, I kind of, had a panic attack because <laughs> I didn't know exactly what the lockdown meant. Um, I knew that when IUP, like we had our spring break extended and um, everyone else was being sent home for the rest of the semester, I kind of figured that was what was going to happen, but I didn't realize, uh, in my head, I thought when I heard lockdown, I was like, everything's going to be closed, like grocery stores are going to be closed, and that kind of scared me. Like we weren't gonna have a means to go about life anymore is what kind of went on in my mind. But then I heard it's just like, like grocery stores are still open. So it was like, you could still get your necessities, but pretty much stay at home if you can. So at first I was kind of really freaked out about it, but once it was kind of explained more, um, then it kind of, Made me, not, not that I like the situation, but it made me feel a little better that we could still get groceries and that kind of stuff too. 
So could you um, describe your um, quarantine experience for me, please? So my quarantine started right after spring break. Spring break really never ended <laughs> since the last, uh, since the semester started. But um, overall, I tried to find the good in the quarantine just because we had more time to um, be with our loved ones, more time just spending at home, I guess, and not focusing on, it was like a time to just slow down. And that was the good thing about it. Um, I got to read more. I had more time to focus on school because I was laid off work, so I didn't get to work. Um, I was off for many, many, many months. But um, yeah, it was just a time, it just slowed down and it just felt like days were so long. And I don't know, I guess you just appreciated things more, I guess. I tried to bring out the good things that came out of quarantine, but I was just home every day. Um, and then we would have school on Zoom and everything, but really those were all of my days. I would read, I would do puzzles, <laughs> like, but just anything to kind of pass time. Mm -hmm. You um, kind of touched on this already, but uh, what kind of hobbies did you have in quarantine? Like, I know you said reading and yes. puzzles, but anything well, else? The biggest thing I got to take away from quarantine, which you know about, is that I read all the Harry Potter books, and it is now a big love of mine. <laughs> um, I can't believe I went forever without reading it, but so that was a really big quarantine hobby. And yes, I did many puzzles, um, just to like take your mind off of things, I guess. Because if you would just sit without things to do, you would kind of dwell in this whole situation. So keeping busy and just finding little things that you're like, oh, I didn't realize. Like another thing is I, well, I tried to <laughs> have like a garden of flowers. Like that was kind of something I got into is planting like flowers and stuff. Um, so just finding like different things that you wouldn't normally try because you don't have time for. Um, this was a good time to like try that kind of stuff while being able to be at home and everything too. And yeah. So um, have you missed any important life events because of the whole lockdown and um, pandemic that we're kind of like facing? Biggest thing that I can think of was my sister actually got married. Um, when did they get married? In like mid July. So that was like mid quarantine kind of deal. Um, and they were planning this really big wedding, and I was a bridesmaid, and we were all into this where's it going to be? Like, what are we going to wear? Um, what is she going to wear? And just all that kind of wedding stuff. And they decide, her and her husband now, um, decided that they were just going to, they, they didn't call it eloping just because we kind of, we knew about it, but um, they did a destination wedding just where they lived in Texas. Um, just because so much uncertainty, they didn't know, with all this planning going into it, they didn't know how it would turn out within a year and where they would, where we would be in the world. and that kind of stuff. So they just decided we need to worry about us and do that. But that was a really big um, thing that I had to miss out on was seeing my sister get married and being a part of her day and planning that kind of stuff. But I'm really happy they were able to do it all without worry. Um, my cousin also graduated high school, which we were still able to attend, but it just looked differently. So that was kind of taken away from her, that whole experience and us being able to see that. It was just the whole, it was like a drive-in graduation, which the situation, it was good that they were still able to have something, but it was a big thing that changed. Um, and we didn't get the full ex usual uh, graduation experience as my family did for me and that kind of stuff. So those are the two biggest things I can think of that we like really missed out on and vacation. We didn't get to go on vacation, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, so how was your um, more like IUP, like college life affected by um, everything that's happened? Well, I commute anyway, so um, 
that living at home didn't really affect me because I live there anyway. But <laughs> when everything was moved online, I was like, oh, dang, I don't have Wi-Fi at my house. <laughs> so that was a big um, factor in finding places that I could go with Wi-Fi. And that was a big um, thing for me was just, am I going to have the resources, like resources to be able to, am I going to have to go to like, I couldn't even go to a coffee shop because they were closed kind of thing. Um, so that was kind of a panicking moment for me as to how am I going to get this done? But I was able to, thank you, <laughs> offering me your Wi-Fi, but um, I was able to get it done, just finding the sources. And yeah, it was just, that changed also in my quarantine experience because once school started back, it was a couple days I would go to you to have Wi-Fi. Um, some days I'd be home. Uh, but yeah, my IUP experience just that I was home all the time and didn't have Wi-Fi <laughs> and had to find the means to do that. Okay. So moving on to like more like larger scale uh, kind of questions. Um, what are your feelings on the U.S. response to pandemics? What was that? I didn't hear the first one last part. <clears throat> so, what are your feelings on how the U.S. responded to the pandemic? Well, I try to stay out of the news as much as possible. I know it's nice to be informed of things, but um, just everything is so commercialized and that kind of stuff. So, you never know how to take it. Um, but the way I look at it is that this is new. It's a totally new strain of the virus, the coronavirus, and uh, no one knew anything about it. So it was kind of, everyone was just kind of like, oh, how do we do this? So, um, so I think that's mostly how they handled it was they just did what they could because they had no idea how, what it was or how it was going to affect everybody, what kind of medicines could help, if any, and... So I think it's just learn as you go kind of thing. And I've experienced just, you hear information changing about it. And it's just, cause at the beginning, no one knew anything and they're still learning stuff about it. So information kept changing and you would hear new things. The CDC would put out new kind of guidelines about it. Um, so it just, it changed all the time just because it was new. And I think that's how they handled it. They just went as they could just because they went and learned about it because um, they didn't know anything about it. So how has the virus affected your school life? Um, specifically, um, like the academic side of like learning and like career opportunities and like resume building. Well, it obviously affected because I was all online, but personally, I learn much better face-to-face. -face. Like, I need to see the person. I don't learn well over screens. <laughs> like, I can read it, but just after a while, your eyes even start hurting and you, that you can't concentrate, and it's just not the same, especially when not all your classes went over Zoom. So it was kind of like you were used to that face to face all the time. And then it was like, you're on your own kind of thing. So that was a huge, huge difference that I could, uh, even now, um, only two of my classes are over Zoom. It's like all the rest are on your own. So that is the biggest academic thing I can find out or like pick out because I'm so used to having that guidance like right in front of me like if I needed something they're right there um and just even just hands-on learning in in my math class we do manipulatives over zoom but it's like pointless almost because you're not there with the people and it's so much harder to do that kind of stuff over zoom so that was a really big academic thing um what was the other half of your question? I got kind of on a tangent there. Um, how has it like affected um, career opportunities and like resume building? Okay, so 
last semester when we first went in, I was like when we first went into quarantine, my one class, I was, I'm a elementary education, special education major. So that is like all face-to-face -face, kind of your career um, with tons of kids. You see so many kids. And so for my one class, it was intro to early childhood. And we had a project that was supposed to be done with a student in a classroom, that kind of stuff. And that whole project had to be altered and changed. And uh, we had an observation assignment that totally had to change. We had to watch videos and that kind of stuff. So you missed out on all of those big assignment things that were a huge bulk of that class. Um, and that it was supposed to be a really big experience that um, you got during this time at IUP. And I, was, I had to miss out on that. So, um, that's one big thing. So I started pre-student teaching this semester. And so that was the first time I was able to go into a classroom because of everything happening last semester and me not being able to do any observations or anything. So thankfully I was able to do my first four weeks in a classroom this semester, but I have four more weeks to get in and hopefully nothing changes <laughs> by then and I can still get that full experience there. But. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how has um, COVID affected your friends and loved ones and in what ways? Um, I guess just because with the whole social distancing thing, you kind of don't know what people's limits are as to gathering and that kind of stuff. So it affected us that way as to, is it okay for us to see each other? Do we need to wear masks? Do we need to be outside when we meet? Um, my family is super, super close. So we get together all the time. So for a while there, it was like, what do we do? Like, cause you're supposed to not gather and we're all family anyway. So it was like all this kind of stuff being thrown out. But my grandparents, uh, both have, all of my grandparents have a lot of the underlying conditions that if you were to get the virus, it would be really bad. So it was like, I don't even want to be around them because um, I don't want to risk anything. So that whole part was really tough because we're so used to being with each other and hugging and that kind of stuff. So it affected us huge that way. So how has COVID affected you personally? Well, about, when was it? September, mid-September, a lady at my work was coughing really, really bad. And we were all very, very concerned for her because she had a very compromised immune system that she had the virus. And so we're like, she needs to go get tested. and. All of us were freaking out, should we get tested? And so, um, she ended up getting tested and was negative, but a girl who I work it was just very, like, throat's kind of Sorry, I had to pause the recording quick. We were having some um, connectivity issues. So what were you saying about, um, how the virus has affected you personally? Um, I'm not sure how much you got to hear, so I'll just start over from the beginning. But um, a lady at my work was coughing really, really bad and just a bunch of stuff. She's like, I'm just so tired and my back hurts. And just, so we were just really, really worried about her. Um, she has a really compromised immune system. She has heart problems. So we were very concerned for her health in general on top of the virus. So we really thought she needed to get tested and it took a couple days and she's like, okay, maybe I should go get tested. Um, but a couple of other girls were very concerned and worried that it was. And so I don't, I don't know if it was just 
them worrying about it like oh i feel like this so oh, i feel sick and so i don't know if it was just their mind kind of playing anything but um uh one of the other girls who i work very close contact with um it's like and i just i'm so worried and my throat's hurting and my allergies just feel so bad and that whole week that this was all happening i was like yeah me too my allergies are just so bad and I have year round allergies. So I am on like two allergy pills, no spray. So I'm like, all the time I have allergies. But this week, my allergies were just horrible. And I was so exhausted. I just felt so tired. And just at my desk, I could feel my eyes shutting. And like, I got really good sleep that week. So I don't, I was like, why am I so tired? And why do my allergies hurt so bad? And why are they so bad? And why does my head hurt? And all this stuff. So the one girl's like, I'm just really worried. And she had a right to be worried because she's a diabetic and had all these other kind of worries. Um, she's like, I really don't want to have it. So I think I'm going to go get tested. So that next day, after she got tested, she's like, I should have my results back. I haven't heard, but they are on like the portal, like the hospital portal. So we're all at work, like, oh my gosh, like what's happening? So she gets on her portal and she's positive. And so all of us are just like, oh my gosh, like what do we do? And I'm, I myself was very scared because I was around so many people who shouldn't, who I shouldn't have been around if I were to have the virus. So I was not so much worried about myself as I was worried about other people and who I could have affected. So um, just for my sense of, peace my sense of mind kind of stuff I was like I need to go get tested so I know who to tell um, who I don't need to be around for two weeks so I went and got tested that day and so I was just a wreck that day. I was so nervous and just so scared um, but that night at like seven o'clock it was on the portal that I was positive so that at that moment I was just like holy cow like what am I gonna do because I the only symptoms I had were the bad allergies and really tired and my back kind of hurt. But um, so yeah, that just kind of threw me through a loop. I'm like, I never thought I would have to go through this because I'm like, yeah, it's real. Yeah, it's happening, but it won't affect me or I don't know how it could affect me. I, I'm so careful about stuff, but it can affect anybody. And so yeah, I had to quarantine um, my family had to quarantine, my loved ones had to quarantine, I wasn't allowed to see, so that two weeks was really rough for me, because I love, I don't like to be alone, I don't like to be isolated, I don't like that kind of stuff, um, so I was just really worried about, like, even just, like, my mental health, how that was going to take a toll on me, um, and I talked to the, de the Department of Health called me just to confirm everything, and who I've been in contact with, where I've been, and that kind of stuff and if I, if they needed to tell anybody but I, I had told everyone that I was in contact with anyway um but they said 10 days you stay home 10 days after no no symptoms and a fever you're fine when my PCP was like two weeks then you can go back to work and obviously my family had to quarantine with me and they told them two weeks and then a week or two after that, they're fine. So it was just, you heard so many different things. So it was kind of just overwhelming as to what path you were supposed to take. Um, just because we were all asymptomatic, it was the 10, the 10 day thing. And they stayed two weeks, just a couple extra days um, after I went. But yeah, over the whole situation though, it was nice. <laughs> the one thing I can take away from that was that my mom, my brother, and myself were all home together for two weeks. And that, that's something that doesn't happen very often. So if I can see any like silver lining in anything, it's just being able to have that family time with them. And my dad was camping or fishing up in Erie. So he got to, he had to miss all of that kind of stuff. So yeah. I know you mentioned <laughs> earlier that um, you had lost your job because of COVID. So could you uh, talk about that experience a little bit? Please? So 
I lost my job. I'm trying to think when I lost my job. Well, we went to Florida for spring break. After coming back from spring break, I was like, oh, I get to work another week, a full week because IUPs extended their break. So I had a week of vacation. I can work a whole week, make some extra money. Well, because I had left the state, they said, we want you to quarantine for two weeks, which was fair because another girl from the office had went to Disney and they wanted her to quarantine. So if they, if she had to quarantine, then I had to quarantine. So that's just, it was fair. So by the time those two weeks were up is when things really started. Cause it just, once it hit, it like snowballed. Then after that, it was like, you stay at home, you were all home, we're all doing this stuff, but after those two weeks of quarantining is when they all went, my whole office went remote and was working from home. Well, the things that I was doing was like filing, um, tearing old files apart, kind of working with other people on stuff, and at that point, there was nothing I could do for them, uh, just because we were all on the computer and all of the stuff I did was hands-on. So at that point, it was kind of like, we can't use you right now. We're really sorry. Um, so that's kind of how it played out for me. Um, I was very lucky and thankful enough to receive unemployment. And I had no troubles with unemployment, which I know so many people had a lot of trouble with it. And I got it right away as soon as I, like the first week after I had filed and everything. And so that was, I was very, very fortunate to be able to have that income because I have payments. I have to pay, like, I have to pay for things. I'm a college student. Um, so that was just a very nice thing that I could do until I got back to work. And I think my first day back was the beginning of July. But at that point, we were doing every other day, kind of week by week thing and switch on and off. And then we were back to every day, full, full time, which was so nice. But then I tested positive and another girl tested positive. So we had to shut back down, go remote. So then I was off work again, a um, couple weeks and then school started. And then I go every other day, every other week. So it was just my whole work situation since coronavirus started has just been crazy and just all over the place. Um, so yeah, and now we're back to work every day, but you wear your face mask, um, just take extra precautions, wipe everything down when you use it. Um, so it's nice to be back to work taking those extra precautions as necessary. Um, so how do you feel about wearing a mask and other social distancing measures? So I feel anything that I can do to protect people around me is what I'm gonna do. And that's just, that's who I am. I just, I, I care so much about other people. So doing my part and trying to keep them safe is very important to me. And so I have no problem at all wearing a face mask. Um, I have quite the collection now actually, but um, I, I have no, no problems with uh, wearing it or the social distancing, just because if it's best for them, I'm, I'm gonna do what's best for other people. And it's tough because some people just don't understand that it, it's not wearing it so much for yourself as it is for other people. And even people in my family are like, well, I feel fine, so I don't need to wear it. And I'm like, well, that's not the case. It's, you're, you're, you're trying to protect other people. So even if you have it without symptoms and you don't wear your mask, you, you can still spread it to other people. So there's this, image going around just showing like, if you're both wearing masks, this is a percent, uh, you know, the likelihood that you'll get it, one person wearing it, the other person not. So just seeing those kind of visuals made me realize like, oh, 
this is why we're doing it. This is how it's going to be till we can get it under control. Um, even it's, I, I see it lasting for a while longer now. Um, but as long as it's protecting other people, I have no problem with it. Um, going off of what you just said, do you think that we could be doing more as, um, as a society to try to protect other people? Um, I guess just going along, just following the rules, <laughs> just because so many people kind of have the mentality that they're so over it. They're like, I don't even care anymore. But that's not how they need to look at the things, look at everything. Um, So I guess the only thing I can say is just to follow the rules because a lot of people haven't been. And I think that's why we're seeing such a big spike recently over the past couple weeks or month, um, just because people are getting so lax about it. Um, like it's becoming a new normal for people and they think that it's, since it's here, might as well, like we're fine. Like it's here now, we have to live, um, but I understand that to a point, but we still need to take the precautions we need to till we can get it under control. So kind of going off of like the public health kind of aspect, um, are you optimistic that a vaccine will come soon? And do you think it's going to make a noticeable impact on new case numbers and do you also think that the majority of people in the country will um, accept the vaccine and um, so it can be effective? I guess just because of what I've seen happening, what this virus has brought, not even the virus itself, what it's created among other people, um, that there's a division. Um, just about how they feel about the virus. Um, I think a lot of people are skeptical about it, which makes things hard um, about a vaccine. Uh, people not accepting it or thinking it's government control, crazy, whatever. Um, so I think there's some people with that mentality. I I don't know why. Actually, I, I could probably tell you why some people think that, but it's not true because it's it's real, it's happening. Um, I think a virus or a vaccine can help slow it, um, just like any other vaccine. It helps you prevent from getting it. It not doesn't necessarily work every single time, kind of like a flu shot. You get it and it protects you. But if you get, you still have that chance of getting it. Um, so I think it's just kind of I guess it's just going to take a while to see how it's going to work. Um, I'm really hopeful that it's soon and that its effects um, are positive for us to slow the spread kind of thing. Um, so I'm just really, I'm hopeful. I can't say that I'm like, oh, it's going to work because it's just so, everything's so uncertain right now. So it's just more of me hoping that it will be of good cause instead of causing m mass uh, like division and that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I just, I hope that it, when it comes, people accept it instead of creating something big out of it. So has your experiences from COVID changed how you like view the world? I guess that kind of piggybacks off of kind of what I just said about since the virus, I've seen such a huge division in people. Um, even my loved ones, I've seen division, um, like even between myself and them, how I view the virus, how they view the virus. Um, and I, so many people correlate it with politics and it's not how we should view public health kind of thing or a virus, like 
in a pandemic that's pandemic is not political <laughs> um but i see such a division politics wise um kind of putting down people for how they view things and that's not how we need to react to this virus um division is not what we need right now um especially with the upcoming election but that really it shouldn't have anything to do with um the health of others and medicine and that kind of stuff so that's the biggest thing that i've seen um like how my views of people have um changed almost just because it's such a big thing now that everyone needs to talk about and they it feels like you need a side like what side are you on and it really like it makes me sad because that's not america and that's not how we should be in reaction to this so going off of what you just said um do you think that public health and politics should not mix i i don't think i don't think they should just because that's how division is created just because of how um political parties and politics are nowadays it's like one end or the other there's no it's so hard to find an in between um so i feel like anything not not even virus related just any topic is one side or the other and it's so hard to like go about living like that and it's hard especially when you come to a disagreement how you like go about that um but no i don't think that they should mix just because you need to do what's best for your people and the health of human beings and it shouldn't matter what side you're on or what you need to believe that you need to do what's best for other people so do you think if we um lived in a more a time where politics was not as like um split and more like if there was a more unified approach to how we reacted to the pandemic do you think um things would have gone better i i do just because i think people have blown it up so much to be a political thing that now people that's how people see it now oh it's i i've heard it i've heard it i've heard it called so many different things just because that's how people view it is they it was a planned virus it was trying to get our president out of office like this kind of stuff and it's like how do you even correlate that with like your health like i i just it just blows my mind some things that i've heard about different stuff and so i think if we were if we weren't so divided i think we could have a better approach about it just because it seems like both sides have a like a totally different way of handling it so i think if we were more on the same side or almost in the middle that we could meet in a place that could potentially get us further so um has this time away from like the fast pace of normal life given you any perspective on like how society works how the government like perspectives on government um like perspectives in like your own personal relationships or school how has that has that changed at all during this whole course of everything um, i guess again just like the whole division in the world um especially just being able to sit in that quarantine and just really take in what's happening around me um you just really see that division that is hurting us um is a huge thing that i've noticed from this and but on a positive note how it's affected my relationships it's almost brought me closer to people just because we've had that time together and time to talk about things and um enjoy each other's company at home and with my loved ones um but it's also brought 
some topics of like the topic of the virus. Um, how do you view it? And it would almost, I don't want people, one of my biggest like things is not liking someone because they don't think the same thing as you. And I've seen that um, happening throughout the world. And so that was another thing that I've seen throughout this whole, um, this whole course of events. <laughs> but um, so I guess there's some positives and negatives that I've seen throughout the whole uh, quarantine and just the past couple of months. Do you ever think we will, um, we will truly get back to um, quote unquote normal life? So I think about this a lot, just like by my, like I, I think about it because it's like we think about before all of this happened and it seems like a whole different lifetime. And I know I've even just talking to you, it's like, oh, February, oh, that was like a lifetime ago. Like, everything like it feels like everything has changed and I think just with the big division and just people taking sides and so now when anything comes up I feel like it's just going to be the same way so I don't ever think it's going to go back completely normal I think there will always be some effect from coronavirus um, whether it be wearing your mask all the time or wearing it during the winter months or wearing it. Um, I see that lasting. Um, and I just, the division that it has created, I see that lasting as well. So um, what are some things that you miss about pre-COVID-19 um, like um, life? I guess just the freedom, almost, just being able to do as you please. It doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter who you're with. Um, you guys can hang out. You can go to this place. You can go to this place. Um, just that kind of things. Um, I coach volleyball, and that whole, like, athletic has, like, the athletic experience has changed. You take temperatures all the time. Um, you have to socially distance, you can only have so many people in a room, and just like that kind of, not even just in athletics, just in general, um, just all the precautions you have to take, and I, I think if you asked anybody, they would say they miss how it was before, just because that was our normal, I guess you could say, because no one knew anything else. Um, so I think how this um, lasts is going to create almost a new normal. So then when the next thing comes, are they gonna say, oh, I wanna go back to that. So it's just kind of like how you view your normalcy kind of thing. So kind of going off of that um, vein, do you um, think that the economy will recover at any point? Um, I think it'll take some time, obviously, because it's had a couple months, like almost half a year just not doing well. Um, so I think it's going to take a long time, but I'm hopeful that it doesn't last <laughs> forever, um, but I'm, hope I'm hopeful for the situation. So do you um, feel optimistic about finding a job after you graduate? Well, since I'm going for edu education, uh, that kind of stuff, the whole school situation, it kind of scares me almost because um, public school, it's just, I don't know where it's going to go in the next couple of years just with, um, just because of the virus, how people are starting to cyber school or homeschool. So it's like, are they going to even need in-person teachers? Am I going to have to teach online for the rest of my life? So it's like those kind of like questions that kind of eat at me on the inside because I'm like, am I doing all of this to be on a screen my entire life? Um, but 
I am hopeful that just because I've seen a school um, since all of this has happened and how the teachers almost try to bring back that normalcy as they're uh, integrating the new guidelines and everything. So they're almost making it a comfortable new normal for these students. And that gives me hope that there is going to be a future for public school. Um, so that's what I'm holding on to right there is what I've seen so far. Um, so I think I, I, I am optimistic that, and I think just because of everything, there's going to be a shortage of teachers. Um, so I am optimistic that I'll be able to find a job after. Can you um, describe your experiences inside of a school, like a, an elementary school? Yeah. And like what that kind of looks like now with all of this? Right. So I was in a elementary school near us in Indiana County. And I was in a pre-K classroom. So pre-K is like your first experience in a school for some kids. And during this whole thing, I kept comparing it to how my experience in pre-K was that I could remember anyway. Um, and how different, but almost the same it was. So in the classroom now, they're all sitting at different spots, six feet apart, different parts of the room. And on, on all the tables, there's plexiglass dividing um, the students who were sitting there. But there might be a little boy back in the kitchen area on the table. There might be a little boy over near the teacher's desk. There might be some little girls at these tables. There might be another one at this table over here. So it's just, they're spread out amongst the room. Um, and I feel that almost doesn't allow them to have that social interaction that they need at that age. Um, so the teachers have gone about a way to have them still be able to have that social interaction, even with the new guidelines and everything. So that was nice. And throughout the school, there are six feet apart um, markings. Uh, everyone has their face masks and they, if they are eating, they get to take it off. But other than that, they have it on. Um, and now this pre-K class I was in, they now eat in their classroom. Um, just to keep away from all the other students. But I was in their cafeteria to get the students' lunches. And the cafeteria is even, each table has plexiglass in between everyone. So you can sit at a table with another person, but you're divided by that plexiglass. So I guess it's just seeing all those kind of, all the guidelines take place, but the education not changing. So um, do you see, COVID-19 having long lasting effects on your future and the future of the country. So like your career or how like our society functions and like things like that. So yeah, I do think that it's going to have long lasting effects just because how much it's affected us so far and it's only been six, seven months, something like that. Um, so I do think even after it's under control that it's going to have lasting effects definitely on the country. Um, so, and I think in schools, it'll have a long lasting, how we go about um, being around people. Um, even in schools, like you have to watch what toys you play with and how you can clean them, that kind of stuff. So I think just being more precautious about germs even, um, but there's so many different things I could talk about for, lasting effects for what COVID has brought to us. Okay, so my last question is, is there anything you'd like to share with me that um, I have not already uh, asked you about today? Um, I think you covered a lot of my thoughts about the whole uh, COVID situation. Um, just that I'm hopeful that we can move, not move past it because it is such a big thing that has happened now that in our history and people are gonna learn about it now. Um, so I guess it's like, oh yeah, I was a part of it. I was like, 
I remember that. So like someday I'll be able to tell my kids and grandkids like I had to go through this kind of thing. Um, and I guess it, like it's just a part of history now. It's just a big thing that I can think about how it's going to last again. Just now it's history. All right. Well, thank you for your time and willingness to share your experience with me. Thank you.